Bonsoir, c'est une soirée en deux parties que nous vous proposons aujourd'hui avec d'abord un portrait interview de David Bowie qui sera suivi d'un Uba Uba particulièrement chargé avec les Beatles, Marianne Faithfull, Nelly Young en concert, Garland Jeffress, Culture Club et David Lindley. Mais tout d'abord, David Bowie. David Bowie qui revient en force cette année avec deux nouveaux films. Un album splendide qui sera disponible d'ici une semaine et qu'il a coproduit avec Nile Rogers de Chic. Et enfin une tournée mondiale qui passera par Lyon le 24 mai par Fréjus le 26 et par l'Hippodrome d'Auteuil à Paris le 8 juin. Bowie était à Londres il y a deux semaines où il donnait une conférence de presse pour les Européens où il présentait sa nouvelle vidéo Let's Dance et où surtout il nous accordait une interview exclusive en tête à tête. C'est un événement, il y a très très longtemps qu'on n'a pas vu Bowie à la télévision française et pour vous, Bowie s'explique. I only know for me personally, and that's, uh, yeah, to make it feel as though 10 years of examining it, then I can come out of it with more than just something as a, a rock career. It used to have a, uh, a certain catalytic pull to it, pop music, and I'm, for me, it's not doing that for me. Uh, I can only look at what I'm doing. How do you think it can help you? I think I think there's an author, I think there's a, a kind of a, uh, <coughs> A, a strange nihilistic, albeit romantic quality to music that seems to be overshadowing everything at the moment, content, uh, style over content rather. And I think it's, uh, I think it's been accepted as um, the, the value of music at the moment, uh, more so in Europe than in America. But for me, I want to uh, get more into the guts of the lyrics. Um, I think uh, it's, I've not quite gone quite uh, into uh, a corner with uh, experimentation of sound. I've developed more of a narrative feel um, than I, far more than I have done for a long time. Um, I've not made it so icily spacious. It's uh, a lot more immediate contact. I guess it's nearer that period. It's uh, when I wasn't making music over the last couple of years. It, it occurred to me that the music I was listening to while I was doing the movies or in the South Pacific or whatever was stuff like uh, Red Price Sock and Alan Freed Big Band and Elmore James and Albert King and stuff like that. And so I thought, well, why? Why? You know? And the reason is, is that there was more enthusiasm and. A positive drive to that music than anything that I've been making or listening to for some time and that's the enthusiasm I started with so I want to uh, try and recapture that for myself otherwise it's not worth working on stage if you can't if you don't have the enthusiasm yourself there's no point in going out there that's why I never went out for five years enthusiasm has to carry along on a six-month tour or whatever it is also I've, I've never been healthier or fitter than I am now <laughs> Get up earlier. Uh, me about 6:30 every morning. 6:30. <laughs> Got to bed about 10. Uh, I did a couple in Australia on the 78 tour, and I was su I was surprised at how much I enjoyed doing them. So if uh, we get a couple in there, I'll certainly consider doing them. But I would imagine that a majority of my stuff would be indoors. I'm not I'm not much of a festival person, or you know that sort of atmosphere. Not comfortable with that. Yeah. But in life at the moment, um, being with my son and uh, waking up and feeling as though I've got a future as a person rather than just as a you know, commodity or something. Is that a change? Very much so. Over the, over the, you know, it's developed slowly over the last five or six years, but it's, it's very fulfilling to feel that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have very much regard for myself at all. It was, uh, not wasn't, didn't have that much respect for myself. Because I've been living a pretty uh, archetype rock and roll life up until 76, and uh, that doesn't do any good for anybody. 
There was something you created for yourself that wasn't there. Oh, absolutely, sure. Yeah, I didn't read the script. I don't, I don't hold much faith in things like singles because, uh, you know, I think if singles artists, you're only as strong as your last single, and it's not my audience seems to be a pretty loyal one. Um, and I think uh, from that, the rest of the audience either grows or, or gets smaller according to the last single you put out. You can't really hold much store by all that, you know. You get to a point where you realize only a certain amount of people like you, and those are the people that are going to be there, and, and that's life. On things like uh, Space Oddity, I mean, that was done in sort of, the entire thing was written and recorded in like a three-day period. It, uh, and speed is essential in, in music for me at the moment. I've never been a, a six-month an album person. It, they've always, they've not been far. I think uh, about six weeks is the longest I've ever really been in the studio. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think so. I don't really think I'm looking for a future. I think uh, there's a little prime things that I want to do. I definitely want the chance to um, um, direct something um, other than promo films. I think that's the, the one outstanding thing that I, I really want to get my teeth into. David, you've been uh, Ziggy, you've been Thomas Newton, you've been Aladdin Sen, you've been John Merrick. Uh, today is it David Bowie I'm speaking with? I think, uh, yeah, I'm a lot more confident about being uh, David Bowie or David Jones. Um, since uh, I felt that I could write songs that had less to do with characters and more with um, personal or um, emotional statements. Do you won't use any more characters or is it... Uh I can't, I can't really see that in the future, in terms of music, unless it was for a particular conceptualized piece of um, uh, rock theater. But uh, for the moment, I'm quite content in interpreting my songs in, on a, in a, a naturalistic fashion. Everything you do, music, m movies, your videos, theater, painting, and even interviews, I, as I can see, you do it with the uh, same strength in uh, creativity. How can you find a balance between all these occupations? still thinking that they're important to me. If they weren't important, uh, I think the lifelessness would show. And uh, I hope that I'm intelligent enough to realize that, that uh, I, I should get out and stop doing that particular form um, if there is no real strength in it or if it doesn't have a purpose, if it seems purposeless, then uh, it's not worth continuing. You used to say that you were using music to achieve something and uh, that you had in mind an idea or a feeling you wanted to get across. Yeah. Have you still the same feeling? Um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, again, over the last two or three years, the idea of just working with a song as a, a form in itself, for itself, um, has uh, fascinated me more than it has done for a long time. But uh, originally, yes, I was really setting out to create an ambience, uh, an atmosphere with my writing. But that has been changed now. Mm. There is no doubt that, that you are deeply influenced uh, a whole new generation of people uh, regarding look, music, attitude. Uh, how do you react uh, regarding all these followers? Um, one is flattered, of course. Um, but I, say that I think that that's where the interest ends, really. Uh, it's the kind of music that I listen to myself is probably very different from that which is played on, on uh, most radio stations. Did you listen to the Bauhaus uh, cover of Ziggy Stardust? Yes. Very enthusiastic, I thought. <laughs> yeah. Eight years after your song Fame, uh, how do you relate to success and uh, what is the importance of your public image in your uh, everyday life? I think I've been able to reevaluate success in, in terms of what it means to me. And what it doesn't mean is living uh, a kind of a rock and roll or f that sort of fatuous existence. Uh, I, what it has done for me, for me in a positive way is that it's enabled me to travel to um, areas of the earth that I've always wanted to go to. And that in turn has helped me understand why I want to write. I think. From the time of uh, young Americans, we could feel your attraction for soul music. Yeah. Uh, but as you define afterwards, young, young Americans as plastic soul, would you say uh, about uh, today's let's, let's Dance, that it's a natural soul? Yeah, I think it's a lot more natural format. I think a lot of the stuff that I did on Young Americans was pretty over the top. Uh, I think it had a lot to do with my... I was still pretty besotted by uh, America and by places like Philadelphia and Chicago and Detroit. So the whole thing came out more like a cartoon 
um, now I've lived in America for some of my life, uh, my experience with America has mellowed more into a more relaxed understanding of uh, American music. But it's still, I think, a, a hybrid music form. It, uh, there's a lot of European content in my music. Nile Rodgers, who co-produced your new LP, describes it in uh, The Last Rolling Stone as a very modern big band rock. Uh -huh. Do you agree with his statement? I, I think uh, certainly to two or three of the tracks, yes. Uh, again, both of, both of us were great fans of people like the Alan Freed rock and roll band and Red Prysock, uh, and the, even things like Stan Kenton cropped up in our, in our talking. Um, I would like to go further with that concept. I, think, I don't think I've gone far enough on this album with that. I would, it would be intriguing to write an entire big band album. Uh, how did you get the idea to record this song uh, you co-wrote with uh, Iggy Pop, China Girl? I, I've always I've fa been fascinated by Iggy's lyrics. I think he's probably one of the better American poets, um, first and foremostly, above being a rock artist. I think as a poet, he's absolutely of prime importance. Um, that particular song, I think, is one of his stronger lyrics, and it's something I've coveted for years. <laughs> Ever since he performed it, I, I want to do that song. You said once that you like bits and pieces of your old records, but not a complete yeah. one. What mm. about this new one? About the new one? Yeah. I guess my favorite tracks, um, Let's Dance, I, I like very much, China Girl, Modern Love, and uh, uh, I guess Ricochet from Side 2, um, my favorite pieces. After all these cities that you were so important for you, cities like London, Berlin, Los Angeles, New York, uh, where, where did you choose to live now? Um, I guess to all uh, intents and purposes, uh, I have a base in Switzerland, but being a pretty confirmed traveler, it's very rarely that I'm actually there. But um, I, have a, I have an ongoing love affair with Australia at the moment. <laughs> I find that a fascinating country polarized and new and, and uh, exciting. Is it going to be an influence on your music too? I don't think I'll be working with didgeridoos and wobble boards, no. <laughs> uh, you have a new record, two films coming out, yeah. The Hunger and uh, uh, Merry Christmas, Miss, Mr. Lawrence, and yeah. you're going to start a, a new world too. Could you just say a few words about the movies and the design of the Sure, film? yeah. The um, A Hunger was uh, with uh, Catherine Deneuve and uh, Susan Sarandon. Um, and it's a, a kind of a, a new wave vampire piece. I was drawn to doing it because of the involvement of a makeup artist called Dick Smith, um, who is pretty much known for his extraordinary makeup jobs in, in films from the past. Exorcist, I guess, is the main one. <coughs> and working with him was an incredible experience for me um, because it's a boyhood fascination I think to want to put on lots of strange things and look like a monster uh, and the other one Merry Christmas uh, I've uh, been a fan of uh, Oshima's for a number of years from The Boy and uh, The Ceremony two films and this is the first film that he's done for five years since Rome and the Census and I think for me that's been the Personally, the most fulfilling of the two movies. And what's going to be the design of your new show on stage? Secret? No, no, I think it's uh, elaborately simple. <laughs> uh, it, pl it still plays, but I've always had a fascination with lighting, yeah. actually, rather than set. I think the lighting will be fairly extraordinary and should create the environment rather than a great massive set itself. Okay. I've got the last uh, request to end up this interview. I just would like uh, a declaration from you in French that uh, something apart from uh, you can be heroes that everybody knows already, you know, from you. <laughs> uh, can we be heroes? I wonder. Oh, yeah. That's my statement. <laughs>